you see it? The, the, the way he went sailing right out there? The, the, he just went sailing out there. It was terrible. I mean, I mean just terrible. We must have been doing over 80. An ambulance. We better, we yeah. ought to call an ambulance. Oh, oh look at that car. How should I tell you? What are you doing 90 miles an hour? I wasn't doing it. You weren't standing still. I never saw such a crazy guy in my life. Get down there. Let's go. We're going to go down there. You stay in the car. Well, he was passing me when he sailed right out. 
out there. Right over there, up there. Who was the first down for? Well, we all went. Was he dead? Was he already dead? I said, was he already dead when you got down here? Practically. He's still alive. Did he say anything? I said, did he say anything before he died? Well, what about? What do you mean, what about? Did he say anything or didn't he say anything? Well, he, uh, he was raving, officer. Raving, that's raving, what he what about raving? Yeah, well, he said, uh, what he said was sort of, um, it was sort of uh, embarrassing. Yeah. It's what, 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 come on, come on. He thought that this fellow was his aunt. His aunt? Yeah, his, his aunt Bell. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He must have had an aunt named Aunt Bell. All right. Did he make any kind of statement? Last message? Anything like that? He didn't make that clear. At all, he didn't make it clear. No, he didn't make anything clear. Look, officer, come with me. Just, just, huh? just a minute. I better get your names and where you can be reached just in case. Look, my wife and I, we're on a flick of honeymoon. We don't know where we'll see you, know we what can I mean? stick around for that, officer, because we're doing Las Vegas and we don't know how, we're, how long we're going to stay or what. Well, look, I got this man of furniture and stuff. I got to get the room before I get back to my desk. We were eating the way, officer. We stopped off to see if we could help the guy. We couldn't help him. We were too late. So let us get out of here, okay? We have services for him later. Like, we got our own lives to live. Like, we ain't had breakfast right, yet. Right, you know right, what I mean? Maybe we haven't had breakfast. breakfast. I'm going to have to get your name anyway. Hold it. Just in case the car and then somebody wants to sleep. Yeah. J. Russell Finch, 2790 Penrose Boulevard, Fresno. But I won't be home for a couple of weeks, but you can get me to my office. Yeah. Yeah. Where is that? What you say? Where, Where is it? Right? Oh, the, the office? Pacific Edible Seaweed. And yeah, it's, it's, in, it's in Fresno, but you can call me through my secretary. Ambulance on his way. Yeah, the ambulance is on his way. Is he dead? Yeah. Listen, we better ship those cars up there. They're right on the curb. Well, I guess it's about over.
What you're listening to are musicians performing psychedelic music under the influence of a mind-altering chemical called LSD.
solely intended for scientific research, has snowballed into a nationwide crisis. Teenagers prowl along the Sunset Strip in Los Angeles, high on the drug. Some of them chew the bark off trees and growl like dogs. They alternately writhe on the floor, screaming, cower in the corner, or dreamily prop themselves against the walls. 10,000 thrill-seekers attend a three-day LSD festival in San Francisco, undulating to atonal music while experiencing way-out trances. LSD pushers openly sell the drug on dozens of college campuses. Adherents include corporation presidents, noted educators, a magazine publisher. But it's mostly unsupervised teenagers, the rebellious adolescents searching for identity who embrace LSD and sound its praises. Beautiful thing in the whole world is, and the paintings on the walls were dripping. <laughs> you know, you can see the paint coming down like this, just like if somebody was hosing it off at the top and all the paint was running down to the floor. But it was so pretty, they were running. Just like they were melting. It was crazy. Did that feel like that?
some sizes. Big as a Grendel, tiny as a Sussman, and sometimes just middle sides, like premises nibbling on the tees. You find them on race rundles just before the sun goes down, or on the wayside in the rain when the single tingle makes its rounds. In crowded wrinkle turns in the wee hours of the morning, when no one feels very energetic and the man at the piano plays songs you haven't heard since Septumulant. The Steris is like pretty girls named Ingeborg with silver shoe fruits in their hair and banjo strings, moonlight gallops to the off and on. Yeah, they laugh a lot and send funny picture postcards in the galpening and play canasta with the rodent stocks when the weather's bad. And sometimes the Steris is sad and sit and mope about the limrocks and the snurds they loved and lost. Or cry big teetledoodles and sob and sob until you'd think their hearts would break into a million tiny grevices. Visterus's dislike, album stars with yellow teeth who step on people's feet in crowded subways, and all wet newspapers with pictures of the winning thirtle blurred, and artichokes for breakfast when the bumbleburger's gone. Visterus's are laughter when the rim runs slightly off the self, and tears when Chiron Bendel's sad and comes around no more. And music to your ears trancing dwindled down so you hear the dialings dropping one by one. Well, cynical people and those who've lost their faith in things they never see may curl their lips and call Pisteruses a useless lot and hardly worth them mentioning. But me? Well, gee, when I, when I go home at night feeling low and beat out and out of sorts with life and reach for my pipe and slip out of my shoes and unscrew my little wooden head, I don't know, I... I hear a little sound, and I know my own Pisteris is there. I lean over in my easy chair and pat its little thermotrockle, and my Pisteris smiles back at me. Well, sometimes I forget that, of course, they hardly ever talk. And I say to my Pisteris, I'll get off, but we never shit, so you never send theirs, because she'll win this in this alley. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank <laughs> you.